Welcome back everyone, my name is Joel Feld and today's video is all about iCloud Backup. Here we go. So today's video, I wanted to focus specifically on iCloud Backup because I think a lot of people are more and more using mobile devices. They want to have the convenience of not plugging into a computer. And iCloud Backup is one of the convenient ways and really one of the only ways Apple allows you to back up wirelessly to some type of cloud ecosystem. I'll link another video below that I did before on backing up to iTunes, either using your Mac or a Windows computer, yes, Windows computer, or using the Finder on newer Macs and it touches a little bit briefly on iCloud Backup, but I wanted to make this specifically to iCloud Backup because I wanted to clarify some things and just walk through the process. So first thing I want to clarify is what iCloud Backup actually does and what it actually backs up. A lot of people may think that iCloud Backup backs up everything 100%. It backs up your computer and that's just not true. So first and foremost, iCloud Backup does not back up your Mac or your Windows computer at all. It doesn't back it up. It allows you to sync content to and from those devices, but iCloud Backup is not a backup solution for your Mac. So iCloud Backup really is only for iPhone and iPad devices. The other thing that we need to understand is the storage capabilities. Apple only gives you five gigabytes free, and I'm not gonna even say free. It's like just here's here's five, five gigs. Like, it's useless. The five gigabytes that Apple gives you is is useless for any backup because if you were to buy any iPhone or iPad now today on the market, or if you have one that's a few years old, chances are it's either a 32 gigabyte, 64, 128, 512. You can't fit a 64 gallon bucket into a five gallon bucket. It's just not going to work. Now, I have a phone here that is signed in with an Apple ID. I'm not paying for any storage. You may have seen this error before where you go into the settings and it says, hey, backup failed. So if I touch this, it's gonna prompt me to go and buy more storage because I'm trying to upload all of the content from this phone to iCloud, but that five gigabytes is just not enough. So here it's prompting me to go and purchase more storage. Well, I don't wanna do that. And another setting I'll look at, is if I go into iCloud and choose iCloud again, if I scroll down to iCloud backup, even though it's turned on, Notice right below it says, right below backup now, it says this iPhone cannot be backed up because there is not enough iCloud storage available. So this is where I'd go back, to one menu, scroll up to the top, and I can see that my five gigabytes out of five gigabytes is used up. I can no longer squeeze any more information. So what that means is if something were to happen to this device and I haven't plugged it into a computer and I don't have that information saved anywhere else, photos, text messages, uh, files, you know, the settings of your phone, the, the folder configurations, everything that you tweaked about your phone. If something were to happen to this, it's all going to go away because I don't have a backup. And I, throughout the video, when I reference iPhone and iPad, they're, they're pretty much identical. It works the same exact way. The settings are identical in how to configure and set up and do iCloud backups. So you have to have enough storage in order to do an iCloud backup. I have another link that I'll throw down below and that is a video talking about how to upgrade your iCloud storage if you need to. Now let's go ahead and go to my other phone which I do have iCloud backup on and let's go ahead and start with how do I turn it on, where are the settings at. So if I go into the settings of my phone and I go at the very very top under my Apple ID this is my Learn With Joel account, and if I scroll down to iCloud, and then I scroll down to iCloud Backup. Because this is turned on, it now does a backup every single day, automatically if it's connected to power, it's locked, and it's connected to Wi-Fi. And it will even give you that little message here on the screen, saying automatically backup data such as your accounts, documents, home configurations, and settings when the iPhone is connected to power, locked, and Wi-Fi. And you can touch learn more and it's gonna take you to an Apple support and it actually shows you exactly what iCloud backs up. Now I'm gonna take a step back and go back into settings and let's say I turn iCloud backup off. Now that's only turning off for this device. Because your Apple ID can be used on multiple devices like my iPad, so I'll jump to my iPad, 
if I go to settings and go to the same exact spot under iCloud here, and then I scroll down, iCloud backup is still on for this device because they're independent of one another. You can back up multiple, multiple devices to your iCloud based off of how much storage you have. So even though on my phone, I've turned off iCloud backup, it still remains on within my iPad. Now it's simple enough if I take my phone again, I can just turn on iCloud backup, it's gonna reactivate it. I'm just not losing a beat, it just turns it back on. If I wanna back up something manually, I just say back up now and it just starts to back up my device again. If I go back to iCloud in the top and I scroll back to the main top where it shows me in my storage, I have a nice visual chart of how much space I have available in iCloud. So here I'm using 40.1 gigabytes out of the 200 gig plan. And if I touch manage storage, this is gonna show me exactly what is taking up space in this cloud environment. So I can see that I have iCloud storage, photos, backups, mail, health, messages, all of this information. And if I go to my iPad, it could be slightly different because I might have different apps on my iPad than I do on my phone. But in regards to backups, Notice I have 2.9 gigabytes worth of backups in my iCloud storage. So if I touch that, it's gonna show me what backups are used. So I have the Learn With Joel iPad and I have Learn With Joel iPhone, which is this iPhone. You could have multiple backups here. If you've upgraded your phone recently and you know you have your old phone, your old phone possibly could be here and you could get rid of that old backup if you no longer need it. Let's start with the first one, the iPad backup. If I touch this, it's just gonna purely tell me what device it is, the latest backup and how much space it's taking up and I can choose to delete it or not. Now that is the backup of this iPad and I don't wanna delete it but if this iPad I no longer used or no longer had it, I could delete this backup so it's not using up that storage. Now if I go back a menu and touch the Learn With Joel iPhone, this iPhone that's taking up 1.4 gigabytes, this now actually gives me more information because I'm on the device physically that I'm backing up. So here it shows me my latest backup, how much backup size it's taking, and I can actually choose what apps I want to include in that backup. So some of these apps, you know, like GarageBand or Google Meets or Keynote, anything that you have, often those apps can contain information of what's in there and that's also backed up in iCloud. And you can toggle on what you want to include and what you don't want to include. This is where if I don't use Premiere Rush at all, that's another video editing app on your iPhone and iPad, and I don't want to include that in the backup, I just toggle this switch and say, turn off and delete, and now everything that I do within that app is not gonna be saved. So if something happened to that content, I would not be able to recover it for that reason. So you can pick and choose what you actually want to back up within your iCloud backup. Now let's say that I wanted to delete this backup. I could go back to manage storage, go to backups. I could choose this iPhone backup and I can just say delete backup down at the bottom and that would remove this backup completely. And because everything is still on this phone, if it's not really gonna hurt anything, but if something happened to this phone, I might lose some information. Now, what's deceiving is let's actually discuss what iCloud really backs up. Depending on your settings and how you're actually using iCloud, it doesn't back up 100% of everything. Let me explain. Let me pull up a help article here on Apple's website, and it talks about what does iCloud backup? And here it shows it's backing up app data, Apple Watch backups, and if you automatically pair your Apple Watch to your phone, Apple Watch is automatically backed up for you. Device settings, things like, like the brightness and your ringer volume, and if you have favorites added in your contacts, and if you create folders on your iPad and put a whole bunch of apps in your folders, that kind of information is backed up within your iCloud backup. Home screen and app organization, text messages, photos and videos on your iPhone and iPad. Now, I'm gonna pause there. Text messages and photos and videos on your iPad. Notice the little number two here to designate fine print. So if I go down here, number two says, when you use messages in the cloud or turn on iCloud photos, your content is automatically stored in iCloud. That means that they are not included in iCloud backup. So what does that actually mean? It means that if I go back to the settings on my phone, 
and I'm under the iCloud settings. So if we go back to the main settings and I touch iCloud at the top and I go to iCloud, notice text messages here is turned on. Well, text messages allows you to synchronize your text messages from multiple devices. So when you text me, I get it on my phone, I get it on my iPad, I get it on my computer because it's using iCloud to send that text message everywhere. So that means that those text messages, if I delete one, they're deleted everywhere and that is not included in a backup. So if I deleted all my text messages right now, did a brand new iCloud backup manually, those text messages are not included in that backup. Very important. The other thing is photos and videos. If I go to photos here, the first option is iCloud Photos. And iCloud Photos is designed to synchronize your pictures and videos from all of your devices. Uh, so when I take a picture or a video on my phone, it automatically goes to my Mac, it can automatically go to my Windows computer, and it can automatically go to my iPad. But because that option is turned on, it means that they're not included in an iCloud backup. So how do, why does that matter? Well, again, just like the text messages. If my son got my phone, which he doesn't really get my phone at all, but let's say that he went into my phone and started deleting all of my pictures and I didn't know. And then oh, a couple weeks go by and I realize all my pictures are gone. Now granted, iCloud saves your photographs for 30 days that you can restore, but let's just hypothetically say that that 30 day time period has passed. And so over those 30 days, I now have gotten several more new iCloud backups, but all of my pictures are gone on my phone and I can no longer recover them. And because I was using iCloud Photos, they're also deleted off of all of my other devices. So it's very important to have a solution for an iCloud backup for your photos and videos. And that's where I personally like to do one of two things. Either don't delete your photos, which kind of defeats the purpose because then you just grow and grow that library. Or you come up with some type of method. Uh, I recommend copying the, the pictures from the Apple Photos or a computer to a time machine or an external hard drive or some option like that. Just know that if you're using iCloud Photos, long story short, they are actually not included in your iCloud backup. Now let's go on. The, uh, the next one in line here is your purchase history from Apple services like your music, movies, TV shows, apps, and books. All of your purchases that you ever do are automatically backed up, but they're also tied to your Apple ID. So even if I downloaded and purchased a, a song or a video, if I deleted it off this device, I could just re-sign in to the iTunes store or, and, and go through my purchase history and re-download all that content. Now the content within there, so let's say I download a racing game and I race to level 100 and I beat all of those and I got a fancy little Ferrari in my, in my racing game. Now that data would be stored in iCloud under the iCloud, we go manage storage, we go backups, we go this phone, and if that app offers it, it would show that here to back up the data of that racing game. So not every single app allows an iCloud backup, but majority of them do. iCloud also backs up your ringtones and visual voicemail for your phone calls. Now, some of the items that it does not back up are things like your contacts, your calendars, your bookmarks, your notes, because all again, all of that information is stored in iCloud. It's designed to synchronize amongst all of your devices. So if you delete it here, it's automatically deleted on your other device. I have another video if you wanna check that out on how to restore from an iCloud backup. If you're ever in the point where you upgrade your phone, you get a new iPad and you want to restore from that previous iCloud backup, you can do that as well. The nice benefits, the huge benefit of it is if you're traveling and you're out and about and something happens to your device, you can just go to get a new device sign in with your Apple ID and it's you can choose that backup and it's going to restore all the content from what that old device looked like. It will restore all the settings and your apps and it will download fresh copies. It'll start to synchronize your photos, all of that. So that is iCloud backup in a nutshell. You really, again, it doesn't back up your Mac. It backs up your mobile devices. I will link this down here in the video below so that you can have it for reference. I'll link uh, a few other nice help articles here for iCloud as well. And yeah, so that's iCloud Backup. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, go ahead, click that like button. If you learned something new, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, tap that little bell, and 
We'll see you next time.